Now, before we get into camera raw, let us first understand what is a raw photo. So here we have a raw potato. What can you make of it? You can make fries, you can make mashed potatoes, you can turn it into chips. Now, let's say you chose to make chips. You fried the whole thing, it's on a plate. Can you turn that chips to mashed potatoes? Of course not. Can you turn it back to a raw potato? Of course not. A raw photo is just like a raw potato. It's uncooked, it's unprocessed, it's unedited. It's exactly the way your camera sensor captured it. It has all the information like dynamic range, white balance, etc. Let me share with you an example. So here we have a raw photo. Let's drag it and drop it into Photoshop. Once you do, it will open up in Camera Raw. Now, as you can see, the highlights are overexposed. But if we decrease the exposure, have a look, we recover all those details. So you have a whole lot of dynamic range to work with. You can decrease the highlights all the way through, increase the shadows all the way through, have all the contrast you want. On top of that, you have all the white balance information. If you scroll down and open up color right here, the temperature and the tint is set exactly to the values that was in your camera when you were capturing this photo. You can set the white balance to as shot. And if you click on the drop down, you'll see the settings from your camera. So you can set it to whatever you like. Let's set it to as shot. And as you work with the temperature, it is the same as working with white balance in your camera. But the JPEG on the other hand is not as powerful as the RAW because it is already cooked. You cannot uncook it to this RAW photo or potato. Let's open up the JPEG version of the same image. Now it's not gonna open up in camera RAW. You can go to filter and then camera RAW filter. We're gonna get to how to open up JPEGs in camera RAW later. But for right now, if you zoom in, similarly, details and the highlights are gone. If you open up light and decrease the exposure, you will not get the details back. See, it's beginning to show these artifacts right here and it's just fading. It's not restoring anything. Besides, of course, you don't have any white balance information and changing the white balance isn't the same. Have a look, there is no information right here and even changing it isn't as natural as changing in a raw photo. So in all of this, what is Camera Raw? Camera Raw is simply a module to work with raw photos but you can also apply it to JPEG. You can also apply it as a filter. It's a bunch of sliders and functions to help you process photos. That's all. Now, how do you access Camera Raw? There are a couple of ways and it can get a bit tricky. So I want you to understand this carefully. First is if you drag and drop a raw photo into Photoshop or open a raw photo in any way in Photoshop, it automatically opens up in Camera Raw. Let's say you just wanted to work the whites and the blacks and the contrast. Now you have two options. You can either choose to click on done and once you do it, if you go back to the folder and open the photo again, the raw photo, you see the changes is saved in that raw photo and you can change it at any point in time. The second option is open. If you click on that, it opens up in Photoshop for further editing. However, if you open up a JPEG file in Photoshop, you already know this, it doesn't open up in Camera Raw. So how do you open JPEG files in Camera Raw as well? If you want that, you can change a little setting in Photoshop. Click on Photoshop, Go to settings and then file handling. On a Windows, edit preferences, file handling. Inside of that, click on camera raw preferences and right here in this drop down, check automatically open all supported JPEGs and HEICs. Hit OK, hit OK again. Now, when you open up a JPEG, it also opens up in camera raw. For this image, let's hit auto right here. Let's set the whites, the exposure a little bit, and the blacks, maybe the shadows a little less. This is fine. If you click on done, keep in mind it's a JPEG, but if you open that back up again in Photoshop, all of these settings are still right here. Now from here, you can open it up in Photoshop and from here you can do your retouching. I already did it. So here's the before, here's the after. If you want to learn more about dodging and burning, you can watch these videos right here later. Another way you can access and apply Camera Raw is as a filter. In this poster, this subject is just not fitting right. So before we apply Camera Raw as a filter, let's convert this layer into a smart object by going to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. This is important so that when we apply Camera Raw, we can change the settings later. Now let's go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. Now inside of it, you can do a variety of changes. First things first, to add that muscle drama, let's change the profile to monochrome and then let's increase the contrast a hell lot. Make the shadows visible, it's just going away. And then let's enhance it even more by going to Effects and just bump up the clarity, just like this. You can also increase the texture right here. This looks pretty darn fantastic already. Hit OK once you're satisfied, and there you go. It just fits right in. Now there's one incredible camera raw trick that you definitely must know if you love those raw details. So if you open up this raw photo into Photoshop, of course it opens up in camera raw. 
All of these settings show up. If you go to color, white balance information shows up. It's all right there. But if you hit open, here it is in Photoshop and all of it is gone. There is no way I can get back to those settings. If you apply camera raw by going to filter, camera raw filter, it's all gone. Of course, nothing is there. So how do we have the details? The secret is smart objects. So when you open up this raw photo into Photoshop and when you're working with it in camera raw, and once you are done, instead of clicking on open right here, if you hold the shift key, it turns to open object. Alternatively, you can click on the arrow right here and choose open as object. Up to you. Just hold the shift key and if you click on open object, it opens as a smart object. Now on top of it, you can work with whatever you want. Let's say you added a curves adjustment layer. On top of that, you added a hue saturation adjustment layer and you increased the saturation. On top of that, you created a color lookup adjustment layer. Chose something like crisp, warm, this is too much, decrease the opacity. And now you decide you want to go back and change the white balance. Earlier, we couldn't do that. But right now, since we opened it as an object, just double click on the thumbnail of the smart object layer and that exact raw photo shows up with all the settings still intact. See, the white balance information is still intact and you can just play with whatever you want. Let's say you wanted to decrease the highlights. There you go. Let's say you wanted to increase the shadows and hit OK. The changes take effect. You think it's too much? Let's go back and just mild it down like this. Hit OK. There you go. Before we proceed, here's a very important setting that you need to be aware of before working with Camera Raw. So when you open up a RAW photo or a JPEG photo in Photoshop and it opens in Camera Raw, you need to be aware of the color space you're working with or the color profile you're working with. So before hitting open right here, click right here and check what color profile would you be opening the image in? If you're an advanced user, you know how to set this. But if you're a beginner or you're just starting out, I highly recommend setting it to sRGB or Adobe RGB. Trust me, even after using Photoshop for 15 years, 99.99% of the times Adobe RGB does the job. So set it to Adobe RGB for simplicity and set the depth to 16 bits per channel so that you have more details to work with and there will be less of a banding issue when editing your photos. Now, as you become more and more advanced, depending upon what field you get into, whether it's print or web, you can start working with different profiles, but you'll know then. For right now, set it to sRGB or Adobe RGB, hit OK, and you're good to go. Now, when you open your image, you'll notice that your image has Adobe RGB color profile. If you click on the status arrow right here, choose document profile, have a look, it is Adobe RGB and it is RGB 16 bits per channel. Starting off with some basic functions, how do you reset it? Let's say you moved a lot of sliders, exposure, contrast, highlights, changed a lot of settings, the profile, the amount, added a lot of masks. You want it to completely reset it. How do you do that? Click on the three dots on the side and then click on reset to default and the image will be reset. And now if you're in deep, deep regret of resetting everything and you want to go back, so how do you undo and redo inside of Camera Raw? The same as Photoshop, press Ctrl or Command Z or Z, however you pronounce it, to undo. And to redo, press Ctrl or Command Shift and Z. There you go. Let's talk about a few slider functions. When adjusting a slider, if you want to reset it, just double click on the slider, it's reset. Another way to move a slider is hovering over the parameter name and just dragging right and left. This also adjusts the slider. Now while dragging to the right and left, while dragging, keep that in mind, not before dragging, while dragging, while the mouse or the tablet is held in. If you hold the shift key and then do that, it happens faster. If you release the shift key, this is normal speed. Now here's another shortcut. If you want to automatically set any of these parameters, just hold the shift key. As soon as you do that, the names change. So instead of whites, it says auto whites, auto shadows, auto highlights. So just hold the shift key and click on it. The whites is automatically set. Click on this, the shadows are automatically set. So you can click on any of these parameters to set those automatically. Now, of course, it's just a technical correction, not artistic and then you can set it to your taste according to your liking and work through what you want. Now time for shortcuts if you're worried about losing details. So if you hold the Alt key or the Option key when working the whites, the moment you begin to see the artifacts, those are the areas where you're losing details. Those areas are so bright that it's clipping. 
Similarly, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key when working with blacks, see, the artifacts are the areas where we are losing details due to darkness because it's so dark, there is no detail. Similarly, you can work the highlights and the shadows. You'll see the same artifacts. They will indicate you when you're losing details. You can choose to stop or go beyond. Don't be afraid to do that. You're making art here. Now, let's say you have moved a lot of sliders and you want to check which areas are losing details in the highlights and shadows. So you can press the letter O to see which areas are losing details in the highlights. You can press the letter O again to hide the indicators. Then you can press the letter U to see which areas are losing details in the shadows and those areas are painted in blue. So O for the highlights, U for the shadows. And you can turn those off by pressing U and O. And of course, if you have done all the hard work and you want to take a look at how far you have come or in other words, look at the before and after, press P for the before, P again for after. Now, zooming and navigating is a bit different in Camera Raw as opposed to Photoshop. Just click and drag to the right to zoom in and to the left to zoom out. If it's not happening, you want to make sure that the zoom tool right here is selected. Once zoomed in, you can hold the space bar, the hand tool shows up to move around. Now you might be thinking, if you're not, you should be thinking, how do I zoom in and out if I'm using some other tool like a brush mask or the healing brush tools? Let's say we create a mask. Click on create new mask and we're going to choose brush. Now the brush tool is selected as we are painting. So how do we zoom in and out? You can press Z or Z to select the zoom tool, zoom in and out, press Z or Z again to get back to the brush. Alternatively, you can also press Ctrl or Command minus to zoom out, Ctrl or Command plus to zoom in. How do you fit the canvas to the screen? Ctrl or Command zero, just as in Photoshop. Now let's introduce ourselves to different sections inside of Camera Raw. Now the Camera Raw module has several sections which you'll find right over here. The first one activated already is the edit section. Then you have the crop section, then you have the healing section. Let's go through some of them, starting with the crop section. As you can see, the image is not absolutely straight. So how do you make it straight? Click on this button right there and then drag a line along a line in the image, which should have been straight. There you go. It's straight again. Then you can, of course, crop it according to your liking as much as you like. Then you can rotate it, flip it. That's up to you. If you want to maintain the original aspect ratio, you can keep it locked. So now when you adjust it, it's locked. If you unlock it, you can move it any way you want. All right. You can also choose the aspect ratio like one is to one, four is to five. That's all up to you. Now do keep in mind that sections like crop and snapshot only show up when you first open an image inside of Camera Raw, not Camera Raw as a filter. So let's say you applied all of this you clicked on open. Let's make a copy of the background layer. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Let us not forget it. Then go to filter, camera raw filter. When applied as a filter, you'll see that the crop and the snapshot is gone. Now, maybe I know what you're asking. Just maybe. What are snapshots? Well, let's say this is your version. In the light section, you increase the contrast and then you went to color mixer. You did a few changes here and there in the oranges. So this is your version. You want to save this version. You go to snapshots. You click on this button right here. This version is saved. Let's name it colorful. Now, let's say you want to create a different version. You go back right here and you make it black and white, monochromatic. Now let's go to light, increase a lot of contrast, and then you go to effects and increase a lot of clarity right here. Then go back to light, did a lot of changes. And this is your black and white version. You also like this version. So you go back to snapshots again and click on this button again. Let's name it BNW. So this is your black and white version. This is your color version. Both of them are in the same file. Even if you click on done, it's closed. You open that file again in Camera Raw. If you go to Snapshots, see, both of them are right here. Now let's move to the healing section, which is used for removing stuff. The shortcut to which is B right here. By the way, if you want to know the shortcut of anything, just hover over it. It will give you an animation of what it does. It will give you an explanation 
and the shortcut, even for parameters like these, like whites or blacks, just hover over them, an animation will show up, and also the explanation right over here. So why do you even need channels like these? Just go to the healing section, and then if you want to remove something, let's say I want to remove this wing of a plane, I wouldn't do that, but let's say you wanted to remove that. First of all, let's try the content aware remove tool. It automatically removes, automatically samples different areas to fill this area with. So let's paint over this area, just like that. Don't forget these engines, turbines and stuff. Now it's not very good. If you want to remove big and complicated stuff, I highly recommend doing that in Photoshop. Let's say you don't like the results, you can click on refresh. Now it will sample a different area for you. You can keep trying refresh. If you still don't like it, move to the next tool. That is the heal tool. Here you will define which areas to sample from. So you can move it around. Let's say this is the area I want to sample from, but there is not enough areas, but you get the point. Let's say I want to sample from this area. It tries to match it. It tries to do its best, but it is what it is. And then you have the clone tool which is just a copy and paste in a brush. That's all. If you place it here, it's just a copy and paste in a brush. Of course, you can feather it out a little bit, but it's a simple copy paste. Again, for big stuff, do it in Photoshop. For small stuff, which is why I have this image right here, let's delete this. Select that area and press the delete key. For small stuff, like there might be some sensor dust in the sky. This is important. Now, right now, it is so hard to find where the sensor dust is. You can visualize them by checking visualize spots. Move these sliders to figure out exactly where they are. So right here, we have a sensor dust. Right here, we have a sensor dust again. So select the content aware remove. Let's make this brush smaller. You can change the size and opacity from right here. Just do that. Gone. Do that. Gone. 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 By the way, with all of these pins and markers showing up, if you want to hide them, you can always press V, it's hidden. If you want to bring them back, if you want to see which areas are being selected and which areas we have painted, you can press V again to bring it back. Now, let me introduce you to the edit section, the main section of Camera Raw. If you are in any other section, press E to go back to the edit section this is where the main stuff happens. Now, the edit section is divided into several different panels and each panel has its own purpose. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you want to adjust the lights, go to the light section. If you want to adjust color, go to the color section, effects for effects section, details if you want to sharpen everything. So everything is self-explanatory. Although they are self-explanatory, there's so much we can do with it that each panel deserves its own lesson. I'm going to share with you my perspective of playing and I underline playing with this particular image. In this image, the biggest thing I see amiss is the overall color. It needs to be a little warmer. So let's start by correcting the white balance. Let's go to the color section and select the white balance tool right here and click on an area which should have been neutral or gray in real life, not color. So I think this would be an area and there you go. You can try clicking different areas which you think should have been gray, but this area works just fine. And just by doing that, look at the improvement. Here's the before, here's the after. Now we can work with light her t-shirt is way too bright and it's taking the attention away from the face. So let's take the highlights down just like that, not too much. And you can take the shadows up. We want the face to be a bit even. You can also take the whites up to add a bit of brightness and maybe the blacks up as well. This creates a slightly faded, brighter, airy feel. You can also increase the contrast a little bit. There you go. That makes it pop slightly. Our attention goes towards the brighter areas and away from the darker areas. And to draw the attention more towards the subject, let's add a vignette effect. Let's scroll down, open up effects, and in the vignette section, let's take it to the left. There you go. Now, this is not the shape that I like. So, let me give you a tip. Decrease the feather all the way to the left-hand side just to see what shape it is. Then play with the roundness and the midpoint and adjust it accordingly. Then use the feather, right here, let me adjust the roundness, then use the feather to soften it all out, just like that. I'm gonna take the midpoint a little bit towards the outer side 
and there you go. And if you want to have a look at the before and after of a particular section only, you can use this eye right here to toggle the visibility. So here's before and here's the after. Attention goes straight in. Maybe not too much, maybe just a little bit, might be enough. Now we already touched upon curves in Photoshop in previous lessons. And by the way, if you want to learn more about curves in Photoshop, here's a complete mastering guide. But in here, in camera, there's also curves. So why not take advantage of it? Let's open it up. And you can just move the curves just as you would do in Photoshop. Simply the right side represents the bright areas, the left side represents the dark areas. If you create a point on the right hand side and take it up, it makes the bright areas brighter. If you create a point on the left hand side and take it down, it makes the dark areas darker, thus increasing the contrast. If you want to remove a point, just click and drag it all the way up. Now, another easier way to adjust it is using the targeted adjustment tool right here. Just select it, right? And then all you gotta do, by the way, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's say you wanna brighten this particular area, this level. So just click. And if you drag it to the right, automatically that point is created, it will be brightened. And then I wanna darken areas like this. So I wanna create a point, click, and drag to the left, just very slightly. That's nice. And for the bright areas, I wanna introduce some yellows. Blue is the opposite of yellow. Remember, RGB opposite of CMY. Red is the opposite of cyan. Green is the opposite of magenta. Blue is the opposite of yellow. So let's go to blue section. It says yellow right here. Let's bring the point on the right hand side because right hand side represent the bright areas. Let's bring it down. Let's add some yellow in the highlights. There you go, it looks amazing. Now let's go to the reds. I think these areas have too much reds. So click and drag it slightly, very slightly to the left hand side. And for the greens, I think these areas are getting too greenish. Click and drag it slightly to the left hand side, very, very slightly. And just like that, it creates a marvelous effect. Now, if you want to target specific colors, you can go to the color mixer. You can change the hue, saturation, and luminance of all colors. Let's say there's green in the background, right? You wanna make it more saturated. Let's go to saturation and just make the greens more saturated. You can also play with it in the image. Click on the targeted adjustment right here and go to the green areas, and there you go. It moves the sliders of all the colors that fall into that area accordingly. Let's reset both of them. Let's just move it from right here. There you go. Now the background is wonderfully saturated. You can also change the luminance of those areas. So you can make them brighter, darker, up to you. I'm gonna make them slightly brighter, and hue as well. You can make it more greenish or more yellowish, that's up to you. I'm gonna keep it this way. And just like that, this is magic. Let's go to the mask section. Just as in Photoshop, masks allow you to apply an effect to only a particular area. The shortcut to which is, there you go, it will show up, M. Press M. By the way, when you're working with any tool inside of the edit section, for example, inside of the color section, the white balance tool right here, or inside of the color mixer, this targeted adjustment, this will be selected even if you move to different panels. So you wanna make sure that after you're done with the tool, you select any other tool or you deselect it, just like that, all right? Now let's go to the mask section. Now there are lots of ways you can create a mask. You can use the brush, you can draw in a gradient or use AI masking. If you click on the subject, the subject is masked. Let's go back by pressing Ctrl or Command Z. If you click on people right here, this person, you have a lot of options. You can choose facial hair, body skin. So there is a mask right now of just the facial hair and the body skin together. If you wanna select the lips, you can do that. If you wanna select the teeth, you can do that. Lots of different ways. Let's hit cancel for now. The very first issue that I see with this image is that the eye area is too dark. Now, of course, you can select the eye using AI, but that rhymed. But I wanna select the eye area entirely. I want to use the radial gradient. Let's draw in a gradient like this. That's all. This is simply a mask in the eye socket. If you want to see the border, press V to see it. And then you can adjust it to your liking. You can move it around. Now let's add one more. Now this is one mask right here. Inside of it, you can just add and subtract a bunch of things. Let's add 
another radial gradient and we can add it just right here. Now, if you want to hide the red overlay, you can check this button. If you want to show it, check it again. As soon as you start adjusting it, it will go away anyway. So let's increase the exposure. That is getting better. Now, I would also increase the feather of these. So let's select this one and there's a feathering option. I want to increase it all the way up. For this one as well, I want to increase the feathering all the way up. Now let's work with the exposure. There you go. Let's hide it. Press V to hide it. I don't want to see the overlay, so uncheck that. Now let's adjust the other settings. Let's increase the shadows just this much. And that is very, very realistic. You can take down the blacks a little bit. Maybe increase the exposure a slight bit. Want to have a look at the before and after? Before and after of this mask. So here's the before. Here's the after. So much better, isn't it? Now, if you want to decrease or increase the overall effect, whatever you did right here, more like opacity in Photoshop, you can play with the amount. So this is more natural. If you want to go over what you did, more like the equivalent of duplicating the adjustment in Photoshop, you can increase the amount as well. So I'm going to keep it at about 100. 100 was fine. Now, with all of the adjustments we have added, the teeth has become a little bit yellowish. So let's make it brighter by creating another mask by clicking on this button, create new mask. And we will choose people right here because then we get the option to select the teeth. There you go. Make sure teeth is selected. Click on create. Now you can just increase the exposure slightly, not too much. Now, because it's yellowish, let's make it bluish, decrease the temperature. That's all, just like that. You want to have a look at the before and after. So here is the after and here is the before. That's the difference. If you want to reduce the overall effect, just decrease the overall amount at the top to make it more and more natural. I'm going to keep it at about 80. That's fine. Now let's create another mask with just the skin. So here, facial skin, body skin, and also the lips and the eyebrows, because otherwise that would be left out. All right, there you go, the whole thing. Let's click on create. All I wanna do here is to bring up the highlights slightly and the shadows slightly to make it even. You can play with the whites a bit and take down the blacks for added contrast. And that does add some value too. Now let's move to presets. You already know what it is. It just creates a preset of all of the settings that we have done right here. When you're creating a preset, if you're opening a preset created by someone else, it loads a preset of all of these settings. All right. So let's say you want to save this as a preset. Let's go to the presets section, the shortcut to which is shift P and right here, we have several, several presets built in. First, let's save this as a preset. For it, let's click on this button called Create Preset. And now you can choose what do you want to include in your preset. For example, for this image, you have made some white balance corrections. Do you want to include it because all of your images are similar? Or do you not want to include it because most of your images have very different white balances? That's your call. I want to include everything. By the way, you also get to choose whether you want to include the masking because it can be very different from image to image. Inside of that, you can choose different things like let's just do the teeth or let's not do anything. I don't want to include any masking for this one. And let's name this Fix Outdoor 4 because I did it before. And you can keep these presets inside of a group. Let's create a new group. Let's name it Fix Test. Hit OK. And okay, there you go. Now there's this Pix test group. Inside of that, you'll find Pix Outdoor 4. Pretty cool. Now there are several other presets that come built into Camera Raw. There are adaptive presets, which include AI masking. For example, you wanna make just the subject pop. There you go, this is how you do it. Just hover over the preset to see what they're doing. There are other presets, for example, portraits, edgy portraits. This one, this one, this one, just hover over them, see what they do. And if you like a preset, let's say you like this preset, you can click on it and you can choose the amount you want to apply. So you want more of it or less of it, that's up to you. Let's go back to how it was. This was our edit, hit OK. So here is the before and here 
Here's the after. Night and day difference. And if you think it's too much, here's the flexibility. You can always decrease the opacity. I'm going to keep it all the way up. Now, the camera roll has tons and tons and tons of feature. Just the introduction took so much time and this was just it. But one thing to keep in mind is this. Just because you have all the tools and all the options and all the gizmos and features doesn't mean that you have to use all of them. Use just the ones that you need. For example, in this case, there was optics, there was lens blur, there was color grading, which allows you to add highlight color, shadow color, and all that stuff. But we don't need it right here. Sometimes just for the sake of applying everything and not missing out, we overdo stuff. When I was a little kid and my parents used to take me to a restaurant, I used to take every single ketchup bottle, sauce bottle, and put that on my food and completely destroyed it every single time. I didn't want to miss out. I didn't want to miss out on tasting this sauce and that sauce and that ketchup. And it completely destroyed the taste. So don't do that, but don't be afraid to experiment as well. Everything is undoable, unlike the food. So that, my friend, is the magic of camera raw. It all started with this raw potato. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And maybe after the lesson, you can treat yourself to some fries or chips or something like that. And if you did enjoy the lesson, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on cloud nine.